Luke, welcome to Down From The Attic. Let's see what we can find. Okay gang, this episode we're looking at some really fantastic toys, although I admit they're not the sort of toys that everyone would have had growing up. This is a Mammoth steam engine, and whilst you might think it's a model like a Hornby Railway or a Skeletric, no, this is a real working engine, and I've got a collection of them, and we're going to steam all of them up. But first, a little history. I come from Oldham in Lancashire. It's not famed for its weather nor its beauty. But during the Industrial Revolution, Oldham was the cotton capital of the world. Oldham would export cotton to all corners of the globe. Manchester and Greater Manchester were known globally as Cottonopolis. One thing still prominent in Oldham's skylines is its mills, and it's there where cotton was spun in these giant red brick buildings. Powering these mills were giant steam engines, like this one here. This flywheel would have had cables attached to it which would run up to the floors of the mill to power the looms to make the cotton. We'll see the same thing with my model engine soon. Near enough every aspect of the production of cotton was dependent on the engines running. Mill owners took great pride in their engines and they were the heart of the building and many engine rooms were decorated with glazed brick and tile work. In a landscape dominated by mills, chimneys and smoke, it's hardly surprising that kids were fascinated with steam engines and toy makers at the time made miniature versions of these. Bing, a German manufacturer, were among the first to build and sell these. These were always a luxury toy. They were extremely expensive for the time, and only well-to-do families could afford them. Bing in particular made absolutely stunning examples of steam engines, as well as locomotives. The cost of these toys were also affected by the engineering involved in making these engines. They have very exacting tolerances to make them safe, though that's being generous. These things get extremely hot. Remember, we're dealing with real fires, boiling hot water and heated steam. I can only imagine the injuries and accidents that less careful children have caused handling these. Firstly, these toys require some maintenance. Just like a real engine, you have to keep certain parts running smoothly with engine oil. Lubricating the pistons and the wheels helps keep the engines turning without sticking. We'll need water and fire to get these going. To speed the process along, I tend to boil my kettle first and pour boiling water into the boiler. This means it will take less time to get the water to heat and turn to steam. This one's probably the fiddliest engine to fill up because the filler nozzle is right there. So what I do is take it out Remove the funnel, put the funnel in there, put the funnel like that in there, and pour the water in there. You also have to be careful about how much water you put into a boiler. Too little can actually cause the boiler to burst. Too much water and there's not enough room inside the boiler for steam to accumulate. Certain engines I own have a viewport window in the boiler so you can see the water level and the mark it off, which is pretty handy. The older engines I have, it's all done by careful measurement. Okay, so the water's in the boiler, time for the fire. My more modern steam engines use these fire tablets. Drop a few in the firebox, light them and set them under the boiler. 
Older engines, such as this mammoth one here, use methylated spirit as fuel. Pour a quantity onto the firebox, light, and again place under the boiler. So whilst this one's getting to steam, let me tell you how these engines work. The fire is heating the water in the boiler and turning it into steam. The steam can expand to 1600 times its original volume. So, just like when you blow up a balloon, there's pressure in there now. And when you let go of a balloon, it will fly around because the pressure inside the balloon is getting out through the only way it can. We're doing the same thing here, but we're controlling it. What's happening here is these pipes are the outlet and we're feeding that pressure down into the piston. Now that pressure is going to build up behind the piston and force the piston head, which is a solid piece of metal inside the cylinder here, out. That's where we get our movement. So this will push out and it will cause the rod to rotate the wheel. Inertia will cause the wheel to spin, it will go back to its original position where pressure will build up again, push the rod out, and that's how we get our movement. Most of my basic engines here work on this simple principle, though some have special movements. This engine here has dual pistons, so as one is being pushed out, the other one is being pushed back in. This showman's engine has a dual movement that aids in the smooth movement of the piston. The smaller engines have a very simple movement to them. To start the engines, you give the flywheel a flick. There we go. Steam that wasn't used to push the piston is pushed back along these pipes to the chimney and that's where you get the chuff 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 cloud from. This engine here has a direction lever, switching the lever causes the wheel to turn to the opposite direction. All the engines I own have a safety valve. If the pressure in the boiler gets too much, it will force this spring-loaded pin up and vent the excess steam. It's a pretty useful inclusion and keeps playing with these that bit safer. This dual action engine I've set up with some lines and it's powering this small workshop. The lines drive the drill, sanding wheel and saw. Full size engines were used in the exact same manner for many years. Mamad and Willesco sell a number of things you can use the engines to power, such as lights, fairground rides, and even music boxes. Of course, steam engines weren't just stationary mill engines, and a few of my engines aren't either. This Mamad steam powered fire engine was built by my grandma. It came as a kit. Working in the exact same way that a stationary engine does, the steam drives the piston, the piston drives these lines that drive power to the wheels, and it goes along the floor. Simply an amazing toy. This showman's traction engine by Willesco is probably my favourite. These types of engines were commonly seen at fairgrounds where they'd be used to drive the rides and also the steam organs. This model has a tiny electric generator on the front which powers these LEDs around the canopy. Put this thing into gear and it'll tootle across the floor. Of 
course, I can't not mention steam engines without mentioning whistles. Yes, a lot of these engines have whistles and they are really loud, eardrum piercingly loud. But you've got to, don't you? I mean, it's a steam whistle, you can't not. Flipping the whistle is a good way to vent steam out of the boiler when the engine is running out of power. Extinguish the fire, vent the excess pressure and remove the safety valve and allow the engine to cool down. This collection of engines was given to me by my granddad. They belonged to my grandma and him and after she passed away in 2001, I inherited them and I've looked after them ever since. When she passed away, my granddad and I decided to build this model steamboat that she sadly never had the time to build. He built the boat and I built the engine and we launched it in honour of her. This engine is slightly different than the others in that the boiler is vertical. The chimney acts only as a vent for the fire beneath it. The exhaust for the steam is right here, right after the piston. The piston drives the prop shaft and the boat can make its way through the water. Most of these engines range from 20 years old to nearly 70 years old, but Mamad and Willesco still make model engines to this day. The cheapest you can get brand new will set you way over £100, but you can find these second hand on eBay, but be prepared to do some cleaning and greasing of them. These toys are magical and very special to me, and if you ever see one going in person, you'll understand why. And I'd say they're really not for children, I mean they're far too dangerous, you're literally playing with fire. But I know there's a lot of big kids out there that will get just as much a kick out of these as what I do. I'd like to dedicate this episode to my granddad Neil, whom I sadly lost very recently. Neil and my grandma Enid had an enormous collection of toys, antique toys, clockwork toys, and obviously these model steam engines. As a kid, going round to their house regularly and playing and appreciating toys and games has had a huge influence on my growing up. It's partly why I've kept so many of my old childhood toys. He was a big kid and one of the kindest gentlest and supporting guys I've ever known and he supported me with Down From The Attic and sharing my toys with you. Oh, that'll do, that'll do. Oh, no. No. I never expected <laughs> <laughs> Neil showed me that they had worth, not monetary but in the joy and fun you can still get out of them and also with sharing them. He made me realise it's okay to still love toys as an adult and collect them. It's been very hard for me to lose someone so important and impactful in my life. We've been working for a toy company now. I know that he'd be proud of me and that he'd be thrilled that his toys are being shared with people all around the world. And in sharing my toys and games with you, I'll continue to make him proud. Thank you so much for watching. I hope all of you have a fantastic Christmas and I'll speak to you in the new year.